Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm trying to help you out if you're starting a bookkeeping accounting or tax firm, if you're a bookkeeper um, and, and you wanna do this outsourced accountant model that I talk about on my channel all the time, which is like what we built, and I won't dive into it, take a look at how to start a bookkeeping company on all my other videos. I'm making a playlist for this. We're gonna have this on our website at feedbackrench.com. I wanna inspire more people to succeed, but in my previous video, what I did, was I started trying to equip you with the basics of how to win in SEO, how do you win, um, just basically how do you set yourself up so that you're gonna rank for these core commercial keywords is what I call them, and they're the keywords that are gonna trigger, that, trigger those um, the local snippet or the Google My Business. It's basically when a local small business searches payroll, bookkeeper, tax accountant, CPA, those are kind of your core commercial keywords and I talked about ontology, just the idea of you, you're gonna have your, your homepage about contact reviews, but then you're gonna have a services page, and on that services page, you're gonna talk a little bit about each survey and then service, and then you push over and you're gonna have a sub page with, that's payroll services by Rob CPA, bookkeeping services by Rob CPA, and so on and so forth, and it's tax accountant, payroll, bookkeeper, all of the ones that matter to you. Now, this may morph over time. As of right now, November 2019, the core ones are going to be CPA, and uh, accountant, tax preparation, bookkeeping companies, payroll companies. You don't wanna be in payroll services, or it could be payroll services, but you don't wanna be payroll software. You don't wanna be, um, competing against ADP and paychecks and all that. But the idea is, is if a local small business searches those, you're gonna win. So you gotta write out and plan by building out those sub pages. And each one of them should have great descriptions that show your approach. They have messaging, there's questions about them. You're not keyword stuffing, but doggone it, you should have headers and you should have those keywords in there and then you should write about those. And what you wanna do is as someone lands on your bookkeeper, imagine I'm looking for a bookkeeper and I search bookkeepers near me and doggone it, Rob CPA pops up, bookkeepers near me, Rob, and I go, I want bookkeeping service and I go over to your bookkeeping service, connect with me, tell me your story a little bit. What kind of bookkeeping services do you do? What kind of software do you use? You might wanna link out to a couple of those. You'll have blog posts eventually, that's totally different. But these are all your core commercial keywords. And I talked about that top funnel, bottom funnel thing. On the top funnel, you have very broad interest ideas. Um, S-Corp, what's an S-Corp? Should I be an S-Corp? And then you kinda of have these middle funnel. But on the bottom funnel are these kind of take action, I wanna buy something keywords. And, and they're high intent. And uh, I gave an example, honey oak remodeling ideas versus honey oak remodeling. Um, when you put ideas on there, that's top funnel, people wanna see ideas. When you take that out, Google thinks you're looking for somebody in the business of remodeling and it replaces it with, instead of Pinterest, it ends up being the Google My Business profile. So that's what we're trying to do. Now let's just say that you have those laid out. Now I'm gonna show you kinda how do you get those all connected and what are some of the basic things that you're gonna wanna do. All right. Um, if you want help with any of this, contact us. We build out more sophisticated websites, more basic websites, um, and then we help with digital marketing and paid advertising alongside this. But you fill out your website and your Google My Business profile, go through your social media, update all that. Now, what I wanna talk about is how do you get it connected? Your two primary things that you're gonna wanna do is get your website up and going, make sure your meta, and de your meta descriptions, meta titles, don't neglect those, and then your, your communication is about those. The next thing that I would take a look at is what we wanna do is we wanna hook up your Google My Business, so make sure that's turned on, and then I want you to hook up your, um, your some interesting things here. So here's the next couple steps. If you go in and you search for Microsoft Bing Webmaster Tools and Google Webmaster Tools, what you can do is you're going to kind of hand your site over to Bing and Google, in essence, by inserting what's called a little bit of JavaScript code. This JavaScript code is going to, you're gonna insert this little bit of code into the top of your, your website, um, and we can help you with that. It's not that hard. Um, usually your WordPress theme will have a section for it. It could say custom code or put your Google Analytics here. There's a couple different ways you're gonna do it, but essentially you go to the, Google Webmaster Tools or, or Search Console is what it's called. 
And what you want to do is you want to add the property. And the property is basically your website. You have the www version of your website and the non www. And what this is going to do is when you go add a property, once you set up your, your web console, your search console, you're going to add your website. And the way you add your website is, is twofold. Um, you're either going to use a Google Analytics. If you have Google Analytics set up already, this will kind of work. But if not, you might have to enter in um, a TXT file on your domain registrar. So if you're at GoDaddy, you would go add where your mail is. You, you go add a TXT and it'll actually show you. Or you could put verification code in the header. You do that for Google Webmasters and Bing Webmaster. And, what, and then once you set that up, you're also going to give it your sitemap. On your website, if you have WordPress, you have to have Yoast installed. On most other web platforms, you're going to find what's called your sitemap, and it's an, a URL, so it'd be like it's feedbackwrench.com forward slash sitemap.xml is, is my sitemap. You take that URL, you'll find it, so Google it, and you can find out each provider is different, and you're going to submit it to both um, Google Webmaster Tools, or the Search Console, there's two words for that, and the big webmaster tools. What that's going to do is it's going to equip, um, by getting them verified and crawled by both of those tools, both Bing and Google are now going to have kind of, they're gonna see when you update blog posts, it's going to be able to crawl your site, it's going to be able to find out when people search, you're gonna start getting information in both of those on how many search queries you rank on, how often is it getting served up. The next layer is, remember, you've already set up your Google uh, My Business. So Google My Business, where you can get your reviews. You better have that set up right. Think through your name, put your services in there, get reviews. But now I want you to go over and do Bing Places. Go to Bing Places, and basically there's a Bing version of that. You're going to want to set that up, and you'll have to verify that. But get that filled out. Write a good review of that, okay? So now you've equipped kind of the two bigger search engines with tools to see your site well. Not that they wouldn't have found it anyways, but that's a, a good first step. The next thing that you're going to do is I want you to go, and it's I think it's Apple, or go to a search engine and type Apple Maps Business Submission. And I think it's connect.apple.com. And what you're going to do is you want to submit your business to Apple Maps. So... You could search um, list my business on Apple Maps, and I think it's connect.apple.com. You need to have an iOS device, and what you're going to do is you're going to submit it there, and it's going to get kind of crawled there, and, and now Apple Maps is going to know about it. That's an, another very important step that you're going to do. Meanwhile, I want you to also open up two major social media accounts. You need to make sure you have Twitter, and you need to make sure that you have YouTube. Both of those, you want to make sure that you set them up and you fill in your description very well. On YouTube, you'll dive in and what you are gonna to wanna to do is connect your YouTube to your Google Analytics account, we'll talk about that later, your Google Webmaster Tools, AdSense accounts, get them all connected, and that's a whole other video. And then on Twitter, you wanna have your business name filled out with a description, primarily around the locality and those service area words. But you wanna be active on those two things because when you search your business name, those two have a tendency to pop up in what's called the rich snippets. If you tweet often and if you have engagement with Twitter and it knows that your Twitter is there, you will actually show your Twitter or your tweets. If you're posting videos on YouTube, which I highly recommend that you do, um, yours will show up. It'll show the most recent videos that you've done. That's a great way to communicate really quickly about your business. You can create more videos about your business and what that looks like. Once you create that YouTube and Twitter, now I also, you wanna make sure you have Facebook pages open. I want you to go into the footer of your website. And your footer of your website, what you're trying to do is you're trying to send signals to anything that crawls that about who you are, where you do it, and what you do. So what I want you to do is I want you to have a hyperlink not just the little boxes, but a hyperlink to your Facebook business page. So you go find the actual URL. Do the same thing with Twitter. Do the same thing with your Apple Maps. Do your same thing with your Google My Business profile and then your Microsoft um, Local Places profile. You want to have in the footer showing all the signals. You'd also want to link out to, if you're like a part of the AICPA and you have a, uh, a thing there, 
a profile there or if you're at your Better Business Bureau or if you're at um, your Chamber of Commerce and you have a listing, put a spot in your footer. And all that's doing is you remember that footer's across the entire website and as anything, whether it's Amazon Alexa, Siri, Google Assistant, those voice searches, or a normal search engine crawls that, it's going to see, wait a minute, these are all interconnected. And the idea here is that you know you're starting to win when you search your business name and a couple things are happening. One, you have those rich snippets where your, your tweets will show, your YouTube videos will show, your business will show. If you have good ontology on your website, you'll see that you get what's called site link extension. So it says home page, then you might have your four services right there. You can't control that entirely, but you can kind of. And then over on your Google My Business, on your SERP, the search engine result page where it shows your, your Google My Business, if there are like Home Advisor, House for other small businesses, but AICPA, if you have reviews from somewhere else, those will start to show up in your Google My Business as well. And what you'll see is Google, they're all just kind of aggregating. And the idea is, is we need to show that you're those core commercial keywords and that. Here's the last little tip that you can do. So the idea is Bing Webmaster, Google Webmaster, Google My Business, Bing Places, Apple Maps. Then I want you to, to set up Twitter and YouTube, fill out the descriptions on all these about your core services and who you are and what you do, and then be somewhat active on them, right? That's a whole other uh, communication. But there's another thing that I recommend that you do, and it's called schema markup, okay? Long story short, seven, or, I think it's like almost a decade ago now, the big tech company said, we need to have a standard language to communicate about object types, like oh, you're a business or you're a piece of food or you're a product. And it's called schema, S-C-H-E-M-A, okay? What I want you to do is go into Google and search uh, local business schema generator. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate what's called the JSON schema code, okay? And essentially what you do, there's one called Raven Tools. They have a good one. Only select kind of the top results in Google. They change. I've, I've seen quite a few of them out there. But what it is, is it's a snippet of code. You're going to go in. You're actually going to put your latitude, your longitude. Um, you're going to create. It's going to say what, what type of schema you want to create. Do a local business. And then make sure that you put in your business name exactly how it's titled in your Google My Business and your Bing. Make sure there's consistency across all this. And what's going to happen, and you put your phone number, your address, your latitude, longitude, a little description. Um, there's even an accountant type of this, but I recommend just doing the small business because I've noticed the accountant can kind of limit yourself. What, once you get the generator, it's going to kick out a little piece of JavaScript code when you do the JSON type of this. Copy that JavaScript, and I want you to go over to your homepage, and wherever you put, there's this place for custom code, and it might be on WordPress, it's in your themes. If it's on Wix, there's a place where you can put um, custom code in your header. Up in the header is where it's going to go. And the idea is, if you look in the back of a website, there's all this code. You want to put that on your homepage once. And what that'll do is it's going to kind of solidify that you are a small business, call that, and where you are. So that's kind of the final little piece of we're just going to lay these basic foundations after you've built out your website and that will help you start to rank for your core commercial keywords. The next third video is going to be about how do you, um, there's two things, how do you mature yourself or how do you increase your likelihood to have authority or to rank? And uh, that means, sure you did all the right things, but so did everybody else. How do you actually rank above somebody else? And we'll get to that next.